Well, the Pirates took a big step last year. Will they take an even bigger step in 2024? It's the NL Central. Anything can happen. This is Locked On MLB. You are Locked On MLB. Your daily MLB podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, baseball fans. Welcome to Locked On MLB, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. This is the daily podcast. We talk about all the Major League Baseball. I am your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers can join today, and you get $200 in bonus bets. If your first bet of $5 or more wins, visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. This is the Daily Podcast. I am your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully. Follow us at Locked On MLB Pods on Twitter or whatever it's called now. And Instagram, I'm your pal Sully. I'm at Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. And for those of you who follow us every day or subscribe to us here on YouTube, be sure to use that hashtag, Everyday Sully, so we get an idea of who is listening to us every single day. And I know someone who listens uh, if not every day, then a lot of the days he is now going to be going into what is it? I think his fourth season as the host of the Locked On Pirates podcast. It's friend of the show. Say hello to Ethan Smith. What's going on, guys? How are we doing? How you doing? Now, wait Sully? a second. Wait a second. Is that Ethan Smith or is that Phil Garner? Who is it? I do have the Phil Garner uh, you, look going right now. You got now. a Phil Garner thing going on right there. And you got the Phil Garner hat. He's wearing the black hat there where you got the yellow one there. Those of you who don't realize who Phil Gardner is, Phil Gardner was the starting second baseman when the Pirates last won the World Series, last went to the pennant. And the first World Series your pal Sully ever remembered watching, which is the 1979 World Series. Uh, still one of the best World Series I ever saw. When I saw it, was the best World Series I ever saw because I was seven. But uh, here we were. You're, you've got some good quality uh, Pirates gear on. you got your Stargell Stars on your on your vintage 79 Pirates uh, hat. You've got – that's kind of more of the Bobby Bo, Barry Bonds era uh, windbreaker you're wearing there. But uh, yeah. you're representing a lot of great eras in Pirates history. Always try to. I think that's what I'm here for. You know, I got the Clementi and the uh, Stargell uh, discs that were made by one of our great people. Uh, his daughter actually took some old discs and made these bad boys for me with Clemente and Willie Stargell's numbers on. I got a Bill Wait. Mazeroski signed baseball. Wait, back who's there. daughter? Who's daughter? Willie Stargell? Um, no, uh, Locked on Dodgers. Okay. There yeah. we go. They got the, the Clemente biography. If you haven't read it, it's absolutely wonderful, but you'll be bawling at the end of it. Um, yes. And uh, a lot of good things. Hey, by the way, before we get going, we're going to talk a lot about the NL Central. Um, we've talked a little bit about the NL Central. Excuse me, my, my nose is itchy, uh, but it's live, so I got to itch. The man's got to itch. Um, we talked a little bit about the Cubs improving their bullpen yesterday with Hector Neris, but this is the NL Central and the AL Central are both complete jump balls right now. And the Pirates have as good a shot to win the NL Central as the Diamondbacks had to win the National League pennant last year, and look how things turned out. Hey, let's go to the trivia question first. We were talking a little bit about uh, baseball stadiums the other day, and the question I had was when they built the stadium that would become Tropicana Field, the good folks in St. Petersburg built it to lure which specific team? What specific team did they build what was then called the Suncoast Dome in the late 80s was built to lure which team? Do you remember? In the late 80s? The late 80s. I mean, I want to jokingly say Montreal just because that makes sense, but either that or the Yankees because I know the Yankees have a minor league park down there, like right down the street. The answer, and we got a couple of people got it right, was not said by Ethan Smith. Ethan Smith did not say the correct answer. I'm usually bad at the trivia stuff. Um, the, and uh, Motion, someone who's, whose uh, name is Motion, got it correctly. Uh, and um, there was a couple other people who got it uh, correctly. John Murphy Jr., of course, 
Uh, Joel Gentleson, uh, he got it correct. The answer was the Chicago White Sox. The White Sox were looking to move, and they, Comiskey Park was falling apart. There was no team in Florida at the time. They were built. They St. Petersburg said, "We'll build a stadium for you." What do you what do you, what do you want I about know. that? And they built the stadium, and the White Sox decided to stay in Chicago. And then the Mariners almost moved there. The Giants they were printing out shirts that said Tampa Bay Giants. Uh, the fact about for a while Tampa Bay existed to get stadiums built. We can move to Tampa. We can move to Tampa. And ironically, once they put a team in Tampa, well, we can move from Tampa. We can move from Tampa. But that's the story of another podcast. We're going to be talking about the National League Central right now. And if we learn nothing, and sometimes we don't learn anything from the previous year, I said very confidently that the Cardinals were the only team trying to contend and therefore are going to absolutely run away with the National League Central in 2023. And Ethan Smith, how did the Cardinals do last year? Uh, They had their worst season in quite a while, and it was the first time the Pirates finished above them in over two decades in that division. So, yeah. In the National League, only the Colorado Rockies had a worse record than the St. Louis Cardinals. It was astonishing. It was astonishing. Because, as I said, going into the year, they looked like they were the only team that was really going for it. And, man, oh, man, for the first third of the season, it looked like that door swung wide open for an invitation for the Pirates. Remember, the Pirates were a 100-loss team in 2022, and they had a pretty good first third of the season. They fell off the map after that, but that was partly because of injuries, and maybe partly because they were a young team and having those growing pains. Before we dissect your Pirates, Ethan, tell me your forecast of the rest of the division. There's been, they've been playing musical chairs with the managers, but there hasn't been that gigantic impact move. Uh, I mean, the Cubs have made some good moves, but there hasn't been that major blockbuster move to, within the NL Central. What are your thoughts about the other teams and how you're sizing them up at this point? Well, to start, I mean, you look at Cincinnati, I think they're on a very similar trajectory to Pittsburgh. Obviously, they had a little bit more success last year with their call-ups, but similar situation. You're looking at Ellie De La Cruz kind of leading the way, while O'Neill Cruz kind of leads the way in Pittsburgh with the youth movement that both of those teams have seen. You look at Chicago, kind of the same deal, just a little bit on a different timeline. Uh, if nobody noticed and I did a show on this yesterday, I did mention that Cincinnati, Pittsburgh and Chicago all have five prospects in the top 100 in MLB pipeline. So kind of gives you an idea that we might be running 2013, 2014 and 2015 back over again with the Cubs, Reds and Pirates. Nobody truly knows what the Milwaukee Brewers are doing. Obviously, Craig Council's not there anymore. He's now in Chicago. What you said, playing musical chairs. It's been musical chairs there the whole time. But Milwaukee, it's just an interesting case because they didn't really get any worse, but they haven't really gotten any better either. But if they're not getting any worse, then you kind of have to include them as a team that's going to contend because Mm -hmm. they did win this division last year. But you look at losing Brandon Woodruff, who even if they didn't lose him and he's still on side, wouldn't pitch this year anyway. You look at the idea that is Yelich going to be the player he was last year? How does the Craig Council move ultimately affect what they do? And then you look at St. Louis, Sully, and yeah, they added all these pitchers that everybody's like, oh, yeah, the pitching staff's going to change overnight. No, but it now isn't. they, ha- they no, have. It isn't one of the worst pitchers in ERA last year, one of the worst pitchers in walks last year, and one of the worst wins above replacement pitchers in baseball last year, all in the same rotation. And, I mean, Nolan Arenado and Paul Goldschmidt aren't getting any younger either. So some of these guys are going to have to start stepping up over there too. And you tell me this all the time in our like water cooler meetings or DMs or whatever, that for a team like the Pirates, and this range true for the other four teams, with the way baseball's playoffs are set up, all you got to do is beat the other four teams. That's yeah. all you have to do. And that's something that the Pirates, if the chips fall correctly, can do with this division that, again, as you said, isn't a world-beating division like it has been the last couple of years. That's 100%. I Look, at you, you quoted a very, very wise man in me. Uh, but when we get back, we are going to talk a little specifically about the Pirates and how they're built now. And maybe, just maybe, 
how they can continue to build for this year. You know what? I just made dinner for my kids. I just made dinner for them. That's the kind of dad I am. And you need to have the right system because you can't just every night boil some pasta and glop, put some ragu on the top. You need to make a little bit of variety in there. You need to have a good meal service and prep time and the right ingredients. And who has the time to do that? I got a full-time job and I'm the voice of Locked On MLB. Guess what? Factor is the place to go. Factor's ready-to-eat meal delivery takes the stress out of meal planning and sets you up for a great success all throughout the year. Skip the grocery store prep work and cooking fatigue, and my kids come up and say, hey, are we just having the same old thing? No! We're going to chef-crafted, dietitian-approved meals delivered right to your door with over 35 meals to choose from per week, including options like keto, calorie smart, vegan, vegan plus, veggie, veggie plus, veggie minus, veggie plus, minus, and more. And over 55 weekly add-ons, you'll have a ton of nutritious and flavorful options to kickstart your year and take the stress out of making dinner. Factor now offers loads of snack options like breakfast, smoothies, juices, snacks, and more to keep you going no matter what the schedule is. So also, we're all trying to save a little money here or there. Like, ah, we'll order in tonight. We'll order in tonight. We'll order in tonight. Oh, I can't pay my mortgage. Well, now you can skip the overpriced takeout trap. Factor is a cheaper and much more satisfying than takeout. Get chef-crafted, restaurant-quality meals delivered right to your door. They're ready to heat and eat and meet and seat in just two minutes, which means more time for you to listen to your favorite Locked On podcast shows. And not only does Factor offer fast, simple solutions when I'm too busy to cook or just coming back from work, They also help you stay on top of your goals with offerings like Protein Plus and Keto. You can stay on track of your New Year's resolution. It's going to come in handy if you want to stick to them. Here's what you got to do. You got to head to factormeals.com slash LockedOnMLB and use code LockedOnMLB50 to get $50 off. Factormeals.com slash LockedOnMLB50. Get 50% 50 off, not $50 off, 50% off. I can't even read this copy. It's so delicious. That's code locked on MLB 50 at factormeals.com slash locked on MLB 50 to get 50% off. What's that song again? Factor Meals. Boy, it's good. Here's a reminder that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. It's live, folks, on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. I have to say, my ad reads today, just send them right to the Smithsonian. I mean, this is right. uh, this is the show I want to be remembered for. Um, Ethan Smith, who's uh, right now he's lit like a member of the witness protection program. Um, good luck in the. I wish you luck in getting that ring light fixed. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about the fact that the Pirates went from a 100 loss team in 2022, and I must say, going into this year, um, Derek Shelton was a completely replaceable, why does he even have a job, like what's he even doing, manager, and suddenly the team started to turn the corner. And while they didn't finish with a winning season, they weren't in contention down the stretch, and they did dump some players at the trade deadline, um, the Pirates gave their fans some encouraging moments. So talk to us a little bit about what turned last year and what do you think they could really build upon to get over that 500 hump? Well, obviously you look at one thing that as before we started recording, I mentioned that this team was 20 and eight at one point to be end the season. I was on this show talking about the pirates having the second best record in all of baseball behind the Tampa Bay Rays. That was all done without a six foot seven kid who's probably going to end up being pretty good at baseball solely in O'Neill Cruz. That was also done that 76 wins, which is a 14 win improvement from the year prior, really with 
two starting pitchers at the end of the year in Johan Oviedo and Mitch Keller. You also saw the debuts of Henry Davis, Quinn Priester, and Andy Rodriguez. Priester not really doing all that much. Rodriguez and Davis kind of struggling too, but that's expected from rookies. Not every rookie that comes up is going to be Adley Rushman. But you look at the pieces that are starting to build around the puzzle now. You have a gold glove winner in Key Brian Hayes. You have a perennial all-star year in and year out in Brian Reynolds. You have a 30-home run potential player in Jack Sawinski. You now have Henry Davis going into his first full campaign with Andy Rodriguez having UCL surgery in December. You look at Mitch Keller hoping to build off of his first all-star campaign after being the laughing stock of every analytical baseball person in all of the land for four years based off of his stats. You then say all these things and then you have more coming. You have the likes of Jared Jones. You have the likes of Termar Johnson probably next year, but maybe a cameo this year you have. Oh, I don't know. Some guy from LSU that just so happens to be dating Livy Dunn. That's the top ranked pitching prospect in all of baseball that could also come up this year as well. In Paul Skeens, you start adding all these things up. And you're starting to realize, okay, Martin Perez, Marco Gonzalez, and all these other moves that they've made in the offseason are not going to knock your socks off. But when you look at this roster, you can confidently say that there are positions of strength on this roster now. That's not something Pirates fans have been able to say, really, for the last half decade, especially if you get a full season out of O'Neill Cruz, which I expect because he's, he's 100% healthy. Folks, th things, again, if they fall in the right process and the right players come up at the right time and make the right impact, things could start rolling pretty quick in Pittsburgh. The uh, MLB top 100 prospect rankings right now has Paul Skeens as the top pitching prospect in baseball. Mm -hmm. um, and as the third best prospect in baseball behind Jackson, behind the Jacksons. Mm -hmm. Jackson Chirio and Jackson Holiday are the two best or the two top prospects in baseball right now. But the you know the Pirates uh you know the Pirates have you know, if he is as advertised then and you know if he is as advertised easy for you to say. And Jared Jones and some of the other pitchers they have in their farm could come up and also just be major league level pitchers. I'm not even talking about putting together the, uh, you know, the 1995 Braves here. Uh, all base, all of baseball wants Bubba Chandler to make it as a pitcher because his name is Bubba, Ch Bubba Chandler. Um, Tamar Johnson's an interesting prospect. He's probably two or three years away, but he strikes me as, and look, at, I'm not Lindsey Crosby. I'm not talking to John Smoltz. I don't know all the stuff that he knows, but he is one of those names that keeps popping up that might be, if, if everything goes right, he could be a, a, a true all-star that they plug into a, an infield that's already developing some all-stars in there. Yeah, and you look at Termar Johnson, too, and when you're looking at scouts, and you don't even have to know anything about prospects to read about it, and when you see the name Tony Gwen solely being thrown around for a kid's bat tool that's an 80 already, and that he is labeled the best high school prospect hitter that they've seen in quite a while on MLB pipeline when he was drafted in 2022. Those aren't mistakes. Same thing with Paul Skeens being compared to Steven Strasburg as the best pitching prospect since Strasburg. Those are not mistakes that the likes of Jim Callis and Jonathan Mayo and all these guys that cover prospects for a living are just going to throw around. That's not stuff that you just say. And yeah, Termar is a little bit away still. I think 2024 could be a bit of a stretch for him to come up. Skeens, same thing. Still has to learn how to acclimate to an MLB schedule. Still need to see if that fastball can gain some movement, see if his secondary pitches can start doing some stuff. And I think that's actually going to scare people in the minor leagues because a lot of times in the minors, you're going to see that ERA inflate a little bit, probably because they're going to make him throw stuff other than his fastball. Because, yeah, we know the fastball is elite, but what are you going to do with your slider? What are you going to do with your changeup? So, yeah, there might be that blow-up start where he only pitches five innings, gives up eight hits and four runs, but he might throw 50 change-ups out of 85 pitches that entire outing. That's what I want to urge people here with this, too, is that the difference between this team that the Pirates have now solely in 2024 versus the teams of the past that they've had since I've been on the show, there's talent at the MLB level already. There is. It cannot be argued that there isn't anymore. Then you're adding to it and you're adding to it, and you're adding to it with guys that we expect 
are going to be good. Doesn't it, hasn't that model, Sully, just to ask you a question, hasn't that model worked out pretty well for a certain team that you may or may not have talked about in your trivia question earlier as a team that may or may not want to move out of their city that has developed prospects very well and continues to be a nuisance in the American League yeah. for how that they grow their roster every year? Yeah, Maybe it's a process that Pittsburgh's trying to adopt too, and it's a process that I'm not at all mad about either. And I like the fact that they're putting together a core of players that Pittsburgh fans can say, oh, that's one of our guys. That's one of our guys. I mean, to me, it's 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 a wonderful feeling. And it's one that, even though they have not had a very uh, productive offseason this year, it's one that makes me think about how they could spend this last, I don't know, almost month between now and the beginning of spring training. If maybe, just maybe, they can go bargain hunting and fill in some holes. First of all, my condolences to all of our fans in Detroit. Wow. Um, kick a field goal if you got a chance. I don't even know anything about football. Kick a field goal when you got a chance. But for my friends up in San Francisco and my friends in Kansas City, Happy Super Bowl to all those who celebrate from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Super Bowl Sunday, uh, I'm going to pull for the Niners. Why? Because I lived in the San Francisco Bay Area for a long time, and why not? But Super Bowl Sunday in my home means the couch, means quality food, and placing some super bets. And let me tell you, this is the right place to go and the right place to put your money in. If you want to bet on the Super Bowl, go to FanDuel because they've got so many ways for you to end the season with a W or two or three. Not only can you bet on who will win Super Bowl 58, but FanDuel also is best for which player will score a touchdown, how many points will be scored, and so much more. New customers, join today and you'll get $200 of bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. Don't be the Detroit Lions. Go for it and go give it a kick. Make every moment more with FanDuel, who's the official sportsbook partner of the National Football League. Reminder that Locked On has launched the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever National Sports 24 streaming channel. You know a coach messed up when even I know that they messed up because I don't even follow football. And I'm like, going, why, why aren't they kicking a field goal right now? Why aren't they kicking a field goal right now? Well, there you go. Two bad lions. Um, don't worry. It'll be another 50 years and you'll get in there. Uh, but this is not football. This is baseball. And I was wondering, because you still see there's some play. I mean, yes, we know that Bellinger and Chapman and some other players are still out there. Snell wants a 15-year contract at $50 million a year, I think was his last request. Um Oh, the pirates aren't going to go for them. Someone will overpay Snell. Someone will overpay those. If but we could are... defer, if we could defer the money by thirty years until you know things happen, sure, we'll go no, get no, Snell. No call. But should the pirates be looking at the, you know, Brandon Woodruff isn't going to pitch obviously this entire year. But should they be looking at Hunjin Ryu? Should they be looking at Justin Turner? Should they be looking at Jorge Soler? Or Eddie Rosario? Should they be get, should they be kicking the tires on JD Martinez? None of these players I'm, I'm mentioning are long term solutions, but they're probably at this point they're looking for a deal. And would there be a chance to maybe smooth over some holes? Do the thing I always say is make sure you got major leaguers on your roster, and maybe you know use it as tile grout. One year deal here, one year deal there for some of these players who are just unsigned. And to say, hey, look, come join us. You, know, you can cash a check for another year. If we fall out of contention, we'll trade you to a contender. Or you could be one of those leaders on a team. Mm -hmm. Do you think the Pirates should go uh, bargain hunting, dumpster diving? I mean, they kind of already have 
in a sense. You look at Martin Perez, I wouldn't exactly call that dumpster diving just because, I mean, the guy was literally a Cy Young candidate in 2022. Uh, Marco Gonzalez was a Tra- mm-hmm. a trade asset that they acquired from Atlanta that Atlanta had no business keeping. I think that that's also fine despite the injury risk. You look at Rowdy Telez, a guy who didn't have oh, the great... Right. I totally forgot they signed Rowdy Telez. And you look at him and you say, oh, you know, he's whatever. Guy hit 30-plus home runs in 2022 and had an off year last year and still hit 13 with ease. Now, obviously, you bring Kutch back too. Kutch is going to be a part of this team. And I could tell you some names that have been rumored slash pretty much the Pirates are interested in. There was a guy last year that played first base that was a gold glove finalist for them that they traded into the division in Carlos Santana. Carlos Santana has already expressed that he would like to go back to a place he's already played in before, that being Seattle, that being um, Cleveland. Milwaukee, Cleveland, or Pittsburgh. He really liked being in Pittsburgh. Him and O'Neill Cruz had a very good relationship. There's one thing I like about Rowdy Telez. He can hit the ball. His mm-hmm. I think his swing in PNC Parks could be great with that Clemente wall being shorter than the rest of the field. But there's he just can't play defense at first base. Carlos Santana can do that while also offering you the potential of 20-plus home runs again. Bring him back. They've also spoken with Michael Lorenzen, another guy that I, again, would not consider dumpster diving to any stretch of the imagination. He just gets overshadowed in Philly the last couple of years by Aaron Nola and Zach Wheeler. Still a very good pitcher. You have another guy that played for the Pirates last year that's still a free agent and Vince Velasquez, who actually yeah. had a pretty decent year until he got hurt. Mm-hmm. There's options that are there. I mean, there's still one third or like one f- fifth of the free agent pool that is still not signed. And like you're saying, Sully, and this is something that I've pondered thoughts on now that we're about to enter February, they don't have to go break the bank and get somebody that it's like, oh yeah, go get that guy. You spent your money on Chapman. That's what you wanted to do. You wanted to sure up your bullpen with a strong guy like Aroldis Chapman. Go get a Carlos Santana. Sure up first base. Go get a Michael A. Taylor and make your outfield a sudden strength if you want to. Add a Michael Lorenzen to a rotation that would be fulfilled at that point because then Quinn Priester, Luis Ortiz, or Rowanzi can have a bounce back year and fill that five spot. And like you said, it doesn't have to be anything long-term. We're not expecting that. But when the front office, the coaching staff, and the players all have publicly said, we want to compete in 2024, Go bargain hunting a little bit and go fill some of these holes and go for it. Because guess what? You start winning. You mentioned it. If you're not winning at the deadline, you just do what you do every year and you trade them off and get some low-level prospects. Let's say this year's different and you're in contention and you already have those pieces and add on to those pieces as well at the deadline. That's how you win the NL Central. That's how you get to a wild card spot if you're a team like the Pittsburgh Pirates. Bring the stuff in for free. Pretty much, because you know Nutting has the money. I'm not going to go into that whole thing, but bring yeah. it in for free and then just add to what you already have. I think that's the mindset that they need to have through this final like month and change of the offseason. Yeah, I think you're probably right. And I think I do think the Pirates are going to contend this year. Uh, not that I think they're going to be a great ball club, but I think they're going to be a low 80 win team this year. And if that's which, the case, that's enough to contend. Which got in the playoffs last year in Miami. Hell, hell, like you, you'd have a good shot at the pennant, <laughs> you know. Yeah, Arizona so, did it. That's if right. Arizona can do it with that team they had last year, anybody in the National League can do it, I except maybe con- Colorado. Yeah, well, we'll see, but I think they're going to contend. I, I do like what the Cubs have done. Uh, I, I don't follow, as I said the other day, I don't follow the Cubs as closely as some other people, but when all I see from Cubs Twitter is them screaming about David Ross's managerial decisions. Uh, you got to think switching him out with someone who's a universally respected manager uh, has got to be worth at least two wins, and two wins would have put him in the playoffs last year. So true. I do like what the Cubs are doing. I think there's a lot of talent on on Cincinnati. Uh, obviously, things can turn with, with St. Louis if some of those bad pitchers just have one decent year. And you're right that Milwaukee, yes, they've lost a lot of people, but have they lost 10 games worth of people? Probably not. No. Uh, I think there's going to be – I think you're going to see a log jam. I think only four or five games are going to separate first place from last place 
in the National League Central. I think you're going to see five teams between 86 and 75 wins, which I guess is 11 games in between. But you know what I'm. But I think that there's going to be a logjam. I think they're going to be really squeezed in, which means every win in April and May is going to be a win you don't have to get in August or September. Don't be dumb. You're going to lose games. Don't lose. Don't give games away. So uh, where, what's your prediction for the Pirates before we wrap this up? Uh, well, I'll obviously have one closer to the season, seeing as the offseason is not done yet. True, things true. can change. Yeah. But if you were to ask me right now, one, I think I love FanDuel as a sponsor. I think they're over under win total. I think it was like 72 and a half as an absolute joke. I just I really do. I think you should hit that over like I told you all to hit the over last year and it hit like two weeks before the season was over. I, I think realistically, when you're looking at this team, you're going to get into September and I think this is important. You're going to get into September, I think, in the realm of five games away. Like you're going to be five games out of the division lead, I think. And that's not insurmountable by any means whatsoever. I'm not saying they're going to fizzle out but I do see the Pirates potentially having a winning record that could literally be 82 and 80 if it needs to be. And with the log jam there, I agree with you. I think the difference could be 78 to 85 wins in that division between last and first place. Pirates could very well be in that 78 spot with some of the stuff that they have dealing with. I'd put them in the realm of 77 to 83, 84 wins as a maximum just because there are still a lot of questions that I need answers to yeah. and that the Pirates need answers to. And you're also relying on a lot of health to work out in your favor. And sometimes in baseball, that is not the thing you really want to be hoping goes in your favor. But if it does, this team has the chance to do it. I Obviously, my confidence level is low on that. But I would say 77 to 83, maybe 84 wins is probably where the Pirates will sit. But they're going to be that team solely that, like, when they travel to Los Angeles to play the Dodgers or they travel to Atlanta to play the Braves, it's not going to be, oh, we're playing the Pirates. This is a free series win. Right. I think this is a team that's going to go other places and actually give teams hell. I really do. Well, and on that note, we got to say goodbye to our friend Ethan Smith. We will throw out our trivia question, which is the last time the Pirates won the National League pennant which future Hall of Famer was on the mound when they clinched the pennant? Don't you answer that, Ethan. That's for our listeners to answer. What future Hall of Famer was on the mound clinching the pennant for the 1979 Pirates, the last time they won the pennant? Ethan Smith, tell people where they can listen to your show. Obviously, you could find the show on any podcast platform that you find. Sully, Spotify, Odyssey, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, all that stuff. Find me on Twitter or X, whatever you call it now, at MVP Twitter. underscore Ethan or at Locked on Pirates. You can also find my uh, writing work over at Steel City Pirates, where I've written about a lot of good stuff over the last week and change. So check all that stuff out. And thank you guys for always listening to Sully's show and my show. And you can follow us at Locked on MLB Pods on Twitter. And on Instagram, I'm your pal, Sully. I'm at Sully Baseball on Twitter. Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. Being stubborn about the name of Twitter, but giving hope to the yeah. fans of Pittsburgh. This has been a Locked On MLB, Locked On Pirates crossover. I am your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. We are family, and you can call me Sully. Nice. That was a good.